everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm getting started on a 60 minute soul journey session. This is gonna be really intense. So the the first session I ever did for this client, I, I shared it recently. It was about healing an aura leak and it was super tricky. Um, a really difficult energy field to bring into balance. And so I'm going to be doing an, an, another session here and we're gonna walk into the energy field and we'll just keep um, hammering through it in a really gentle and loving way <laughs> to bring everything into harmony and balance and do some self-discovery and uh, try, to, try to make sense of it as much as we can. So brace yourselves. <laughs> All right, so this session is just literally to step in and continue to um, do energy work to bring balance to the energy field. Um, I'm going to go ahead and relax now and get connected with the client. Um, I'm really excited right now to see how things are looking. Okay. So one thing my spirit guides are asking if I feel there is an aura leak. Um, I don't, I don't relate. I don't want to identify this as an aura leak. I want to identify this as um, the energy energy fields are infinite spaces. They're universes. And so a universe, you can't just pop a hole in a universe. Um, there's always, inner, there's communication going on and the communication is either harmoni harmonized or it's resisting or it, um, it's reacting in all different types of ways. So the more that we can get the universe to be on board with itself, for the universe to work together as a team, and the more that universe feels like heavenly music, Music, okay, but when the universe has a lot of different um, avenues that aren't syncing up or working together at the same, I don't know how you want to describe it, sort of like um, it's a masterpiece of music or it's um, hurting my ears like nails down a chalkboard. And we want to kind of bring it into the masterpiece of music. So all these different universes, we're going to help them work together and harmonize. And that's what the goal here is. So when I hear Aura Leak, um, I don't, I don't really, I don't really resonate with that. I don't. That's not me saying that Aura Leak isn't isn't possible or isn't happening. I resonate more with the sounds of a harmonious energy field versus the sounds of an energy field that is in a state of resistance or confusion or rejection or all of these other things. Once we get that into balance, everything becomes awesome. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Okay. Well, first things first, I can tell that you've been working on yourself because when I walk in here, there's actually a waterfall. It's odd because it's almost like a, it's like a mud waterfall, like a landslide, but it just it's like a waterfall of pure mud. Um, and I can see through it though. And on the other side, through the mud is uh, just sort of like, I don't know, it's this really pretty looking ground. I mean, it's not like a rock wall. It's m almost like it's got golden, um, golden flecks in um, hardened rock, but the rock is like orange and red and, and yellowish orange colors and it sort of goes down. It looks really pretty on the other side of this mud, muddy waterfall. But I will say that this is uh, you working on yourself. I can tell. I can actually tell because I can breathe in your energy field. I feel there's room for me to walk around. It's not all sort of like... Um, you know, layered upon, layer upon layer upon layer, and I'm just sort of like saturated in all of this that's not really functioning together. It's just like a bunch of stuff going on that I have to figure out and sort through like an insanely messy room. <laughs> but um, this looks good, actually. This is a really good improvement. All right, now the muddy water is starting to turn into blood. And there's some things that your soul has seen that you don't want to talk about and you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to go there. I can tell there's something about the way this muddy water is turning to blood that it's sort of like your inner wise self is saying it's time for you to take a look at some of these things that you're not wanting to look at. Is it painful? I mean, this blood isn't necessarily saying that it hurts me. It's just uh, it needs to be seen. 
Hmm. Let me keep looking at it here. So something feels a bit uh, like it doesn't want to be totally honest with me. All right, just a moment. I'm, I'm slowing things way down here. Okay, I'm gonna walk. I'm this this may get a little bit worse, but I'm so I'm walking through this scene to the next scene, and there's uh, what is this? It has like uh, eight total arms, like four and four, and it looks a bit like a scorpion man, and he's got blue skin, and he's got knives in all of his hands, and he's just going. Tew, tew, tew like a knife ninja scorpion man and then he's just cutting me into pieces and I stand here and I accept it and I let him cut me into pieces and it's odd because I'm taking the role of a it isn't a victim role but it is taking the brunt of the suffering so you could say that within yourself you you have a side of you that is coming forward and allowing a side that doesn't want to work on itself to take all of its um, what is built up within itself out on this part of you. So you stand there and you receive all of this negative energy and because you are strong. And this is not strong enough. The scorpion man is not strong enough. So now he takes all of this out on you in order to um, bring himself into balance. Because he doesn't know how to cope with the energy, but you do. So you just allow him to take it out on you and he cuts you into many, many pieces. But you somehow know how to cope with this. You know how to cope with being cut into many pieces and staying together somehow. But Scorpion Man doesn't know what, else, what to do with himself but to use the knives to cut you apart. Um, but you, in your energy field, define this as balance. As this is how we do things here. Again, your energy field is uh, showing a lot of progress. <laughs> it, it's awesome in here compared to what it was. It's actually awesome in here. <sighs> okay. Just give me a second. I'm, I'm uh, figuring something else out right now. It's a bit uh, like we hit we hit an unknown. So in your in your energy field, in your inner walk, we have seen this uh, interaction taking place. And now that I'm talking to your deeper essence and helping your deeper essence to see yourself, um, we've reached an unknown. And you don't really know what to do. You don't, you can't even perceive of what it looks like. You don't know what comes next. And so everything is just stopping, but it's sort of filling itself in and we're not going to move any further than this. So there isn't any scorpion man with knives and there isn't any part of yourself being cut into pieces. There's just nothing left because we don't know how to move forward from here. But what you have done is you erased everything that I have shown you thus far. It's just there's nothing, but we've reached the end of the world, the end of the sidewalk, the end of the universe. And now we've reached the unknown. It's quiet. But the thing is, is it's, it's on a level of your playing games with yourself. <sighs> All right, if I were to describe what where that's coming from it's sort of like there's a weird purple essence that's over here watching me as uh, it fills in the blanks as we've reached the unknown so it does feel that way it actually does you really have achieved reaching the edge of the universe the edge of the unknown but this purple energy is kind of watching to see how i react and since it's watching to see how I react, that means it's not complete within itself. It needs a reaction in order to decide what it is. So it's kind of creating a scene here. Um, but I'm just going to wait a minute. You are doing this. You are watching me. You are giving me a presentation. 
But this is all real. This is not an, a fabricated idea that you actually are relating to this, but you're also kind of... Um, Hmm. Let me just let me just keep watching here. The best way to describe it is he doesn't know how to He's watching me. He's watching my reactions. He's starting to disappear now. There's something about him. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to run into him again, but I'm just going to stand here. Everything is sort of filled in with soils, and I've reached the edge of the universe kind of thing, but... <sighs> okay, I'm going to slow down a minute. This is getting very exhausting feeling. Okay, I'm gonna have to, okay, you, you are working on yourself, your energy field is feeling so much better, but I'm starting to move back into some of the memories of what I've experienced in your energy field before. <laughs> it's a, it likes to erase your thoughts, it likes to feel a bit um, undecided, I suppose you could say. Right now, it feels like everything is getting very exhausting. I don't know where I am. What was I thinking before? Why am I standing here? It's kind of creating those feelings. Um, and so I'm going to have to talk as much as possible. Otherwise, your energy will shut down my mind. Okay? <laughs> it's got a... The next thing I see is sort of an orangish color. It's like orangish into a creamy brown, like a light creamy brown color. Starting to remind me of the waterfall again. I'm gonna have to just start moving through. I, I mean, I'm literally just gonna start claw like like taking my fingers without claws and I'm just like putting them into the putty and the clay. So whatever you show me, I'm just gonna like move it out of the way. And that whatever that purple thing is 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 not a, is not helping you. So I'm starting to notice it again. I'm going to start creating my own ideas then. I'm going to have to... I'm talking through my own ideas right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm moving stuff out of the way. I don't know why I'm thinking of a genie, a magic genie lamp. So I'm going to start making my own story in here. And I'm going to do whatever I want. So I'm going to decide now. In purple thing, then you don't have any power or control because I get to decide. I get to decide whatever I want. And now you're going to be a part of my story. I'm not going to be a part of your story. You're going to be a part of my story. Okay, so my story is purple. You're inside of the magical lamp, and I control you because guess what? I'm not in the lamp. I'm just touching the lamp. And now when I touch the lamp, you have to come out. I control you. You don't control me. And now I'm bringing you, okay? I'm bringing your consciousness here to stand next to me, and I'm going to let you actually control the purple energy that's within the lamp. So you're going to rub it, and the purple energy is going to come out, and you're going to face this part of yourself. This part of yourself is really manipulative. Because uh, when, when the genie comes out, which is purple, um, we're standing in a room that's covered in gorgeous-looking rugs, and they all have a bit of a sparkle to them, like a golden sparkle. But I need you to stand firm and to know what it is that you want. What do you want right now? And all you can think of is orange, 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 orange. But you don't know what orange and why orange and where do I go with this orange? Like, am I eating the orange ice cream? Am I eating, you know, am I wearing an orange t-shirt? Orange, I don't know. <laughs> and I say, you have to know. So what? Just come up with something and say, this is all you know. And it's like knowing a million things. So say, um, orange dream sickle. And tell purple orange dream sickle and see what purple does. You're afraid of this. You're afraid of purple. Because you say orange dream sickle and you're like, uh, 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 or, or, orange uh, uh, dream, uh, dream sickle. Like you're like this. And purple just finds this so great. And I say, no, you are going to say orange dream sickle. 
And I want you to see that purple is you. So you're simply talking to yourself. Why are you intimidated by yourself? You're not intimidated by yourself. Talk to yourself. Yourself is not an intimidating thing. All right, so you do. You say orange dream sickle, and when you say it, um, your mouth starts to become full of razor blades, and they're kind of like coming out of your throat and your mouth, and they're coming out of your face and your eyes and your mind and everything. Like all of these, like razor blades are coming out. Yeah, but you did say orange dream sickle fully and clearly, even though it's like all of these razor blades coming out. So it appear that you didn't say it, but frequency wise, you did. You spoke it from your heart. And I say, just keep owning it. This is just merely a distraction. It's not actually real. Just keep saying orange dream sickle. When you say orange dream sickle, you need to say orange dream sickle. And in, as you're saying orange dream sickle, you're actually saying, I am, I choose to be who I am. I know who I am. I am, you know, who I am. Like you need to say things as though, um, with, uh, like, like it's the word confidence confidence, trust in myself. I know who I am. I am my higher self, like confidence. Okay. So orange dream sickle is just keywords, but orange dream sickle means everything that is related to, I am confident. I stand in my own shoes. I know who I am. I am control of my own life. I make my own choices. I trust in my choices. I, you know, and it's like saying things like this. Okay. So when you say orange dream sickle, you are really saying all of these millions of things about confidence and believing in yourself and things like this, standing your own ground. So just keep saying orange dream sickle. And even though all these razor blades are coming out, just let them come out. They're just trying to prevent you from being this confident and strong willed and to know yourself, stand in your own um, shoes. You got this thing. Okay. So in the pro you are, you're getting, you're still saying orange dream sickle and it's clearing out one heck of a jam in your emotional gut and your mental body is starting to have a shift as well. Purple is uh, starting to not be as tangible, which uh, I don't know where that's going to go if that's completely cleared out, but let's just keep doing this and see what else is moving about here. Okay, orange dream sickle, orange dream sickle, orange dream sickle. You know this, you know this, you know what orange dream sickle means. Come on, say it. You're getting worn out. I mean, your stomach's like full of golf balls, ping pong balls, like white balls. You need a break. You say, I'm, I need you to stop. I need you to stop. You say that. You uh, want to hide and you want to go inside of this genie lamp and hide inside and cry. And you don't want anybody to find you, anybody to see you. You don't want this role. You don't want to, to, to own the genie lamp. You don't want to control the genie. You don't want any of this. Just stop it. And I say, so you're telling me you don't want to be confident in yourself. You're telling me right now it is not okay for you to own your own confidence, to love yourself. You want to hide from being confident in yourself. You want to hide from confidence and loving yourself. You want to hide and cry. Okay, so you're so we're, I'm going to get it out of you. I'm going to. <laughs> but you're uh, in the genie bottle and you're getting, you're morphing. So you're turning orange and purple and you're morphing um, and you're reacting to me like drill sergeanting you. <laughs> I'm going to get you to react. I'm going to get you to react. All right. So you do both. Uh, what could I, I mean, you put yourself on a leash and then you walk your own self and you drag yourself. And then you also are a slave to yourself. So you're all of these things. Again, your energy field is a lot better than it was. The reason why is because I can actually move through it. Um, and before it was just like, it was, you couldn't move through it. You, it was very hard to move through. It's like being stuck in the mud for an hour. <laughs> it was like so hard. Now there's tangibility. Now there's a uh, like uh, more definable ideas, definable vulnerabilities, definable scenes. 
It's more tangible, easier to work with. We're easy. It's easier to go places from here. Um, otherwise, it was like a hodgepodge of a lot of different colors of Play-Doh, you know, um, that wanted to be uniquely their own color, but splurged together. And it was just very difficult to move through. But this is improving, B big improvement. Hmm. All right, so you have this orange side and you have this purple side and they're splurged together. But they aren't, they're kind of, um, they show me when purple and orange are splurged together, that's when I get the image of you are a dog on a leash, but you are walking yourself, but you are also dragging yourself, but you are also a slave to yourself. So that's what orange and purple splurged together is showing me this about you. All right, this is uh, this is uh, not something. It's sort of very. There's a complicated aspect to this on how I'm going to bring this into balance. How did you do this? Like, how did you create this? Hmm. Give me a minute. It's very exhaust. It's like there's a lot of energy exhaustion around the head going on here. So. Okay, I'm going to just slow things on down. Your, your relationship with identity is really strange. Like the who am I? We all don't, we all say, ask the question, well, who am I? And we, none of us actually know the answer to that, but yet we know many answers to that question. Um, but there's something about your relationship with identity that's, that, that, wouldn't if, even if it could say well um you know i'm a human being i'm a soul i'm a master of the universe you know you could say these things and all are true right um you could say i'm pathetic i i am poor i am rich i am sad i am great you know but and they would all be true on some level shape or form we're all everything we literally are all everything even if we're like oodles rich we also are poor on some level like we are literally everything so, but when I create identities like, um, you know, like to define, to create definable like sectors, like where your consciousness would, would be, def have definable identities like this, um, it just feels like, um, like uh, putting dye in water and it just like moves about. It doesn't, it doesn't relate to, you know, I am human, I am a soul, I'm a master of the universe. Like these are just, th th these are words like that don't, um, they might as well be, um, let's say they, let's say you go to school and the teacher is going to teach you the alphabet, but, it, but now you're going to learn the alphabet today, but to learn the alphabet, your teacher just simply, um, starts to color a tree on a, on a chalk, on the chalkboard or whatever, just like draws a tree. And there's the alphabet today, kids. No, it doesn't, it, something is misconstrued here, like royally misconstrued. It doesn't compute, it doesn't sync up. And it has to do with your relationship with how you would ident identify yourself or how you would define yourself. It's very wishy-washy. It's very undefined. Obviously, you are everything, so the alphabet could be a tree. Um, but there's something lost in it. This is getting very exhausting on the mental body, even more exhausting, okay? When your mental body gets exhausted, my mental body gets exhausted. So it's almost like my mental body is wanting to shut down and it's hard to think straight. So I've got to really hang in here because your energy field has really unique ways of doing things. All right, we're going to create, um, I'm actually going to create another scene in your energy field because we got to, we got to keep 
moving. We got to keep moving. And if we stop, we're going to turn into oblivion and then there's nothing left. Like, <laughs> so I'm creating the first thing that comes to mind is a blue box with a blue glowing light in the center. Okay. And when I say this blue box, blue glowing light, you, your throat instantly starts to gag and you're throwing up um, something. Your ears start to bother you. And I feel like literally like topsy turvy. Like I can't stand straight. I feel like I'm a teeter-totter that goes back and forth. Um, I, do, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. This is also going on in the mental body reacting to this. And I say, blue box, blue light, blue box, blue light, blue box, blue light. So I say this. This is just like orange dream sickle. I'm just saying this, okay? Blue box, blue light, blue box, blue light. Okay, we're get we're making progress here. What it what is the response to this? Blue box, blue light, blue box, blue light. Come on, putting a cactus over here in the corner. Let's create a desk. Um, I'm gonna take some paint and I'm just gonna throw plant paint all over the floor. So I'm making a mess in your blue box. There's blue light in here, I'm making a mess in here. I'm gonna take this desk and I'm gonna throw it on a side. I'm gonna take this cactus and I'm gonna just bash it around. I'm gonna hurt the cactus, it's cactus is gonna die now. Blue box, blue light, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? I'm gonna put orange and purple in the center of this place. They don't get to just linger. They gotta be participating in this. You, uh, interestingly, so I put purple and orange in here and they phase out because they don't want to have an identi identity. They don't want to define themselves as anything. So they're starting to disconnect the, like they're phasing out of, um, having a, I having a connection with definable ideas. So, you know, we're just creating an idea. That's all we're doing. And then placing orange and purple in the idea so I can understand what their relationship is with these ideas. Does it make them uncomfortable that I'm going to hurt the cactus? Do they like messes or do they not like messes? Do they feel dirty? Do they hate my guts because I'm creating this loud noise in here? What is a relationship with a color blue? What does a blue light mean to them? They're just phasing out. They want to have no relationship with any of this stuff. So I'm going to recreate duplicates of them in here. So I, the purple and orange are going to become everything that is in here. And they're going to be contained inside of a box of themselves. All right. So let's see how they react to this. They can't escape. You can't escape yourself. All right. This has to do with the sexual balance. There's a huge issue here with this. And this also has to do with the throat as well. There, th this is getting back to the bloody waterfall. Um, there, this is a something that you need to look at that you're having a hard time. And I don't know where it actually exists in your soul timeline, but it's not, it's not just this lifetime, I can tell you that. And it's very hard to point out where it actually comes from. But it does, it's a, it's a thing going on here and it's a big issue. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, you're in a box of yourself. You're trapped inside yourself. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna have to do some crazy stuff here. So you're trapped inside of a box within yourself and you are lost inside yourself. You can't find yourself because you don't realize who and what you are is existence itself. Where do you exist but within yourself? You are yourself. You are existence. You are all the colors. You're not just purple and orange. You are all that is. Was, ever, will be. You are all time. You are all places. I'm, fee I'm feeding this energy to them. Like I'm feeding these ideas. I just want to see how they react. I'm going to have to separate them because they're feeding off of each other to cope with what's going on. So they're going to have to go in separate rooms. I'm going to put per orange in a purple room and purple in an orange room. 
All right, so now there's a mirror between the rooms and they're both um, screaming and clawing at each other, but they can't reach each other because there's a wall between them. There's a mirror. And they hate each other like desperately, desperately bad. <sighs> and they're, they are, they're kind of like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> they're doing these like weird facial reactions and like eyes rolling back and they're all like, <laughs> and they're like trying to get, get at each other, but they're kind of freaking out at the same time. This also has to do with your heart as well. Okay, okay good. Okay, you're getting some reactions out. That's good. Anger, anger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Your head's blowing up. You're exploding. Blue color is starting to come back. It's uh, you're starting to have like kind of a mental breakdown, and you're literally like holding your head and you're rocking back and forth. But I see that your one mind split into three pieces, and one of them is purple, orange, and blue, and you're literally having a a psychotic meltdown in the center of. You being all the parts of you while you being separated from all the parts of you while you, like, basically, you're having a mental episode here. Severe one. And your sexual body is related to this. And I say, why are you having such a hard time coping? You see, I'm creating a lot of noise because you need it. You need noise. In order to... to just identify with some simple things about yourself. Why are you not doing that? Okay. Uh. Okay. I have no idea how to explain this, but... Hmm. That's just... Oh, man. All right, so... You have a... I don't know how to, I don't know. I All I can do is just try to define this and then we'll see if we can define it better, okay? So I don't know this is the best way to put it, but this part of you, you could imagine yourself sitting in the center of room that seems to be like broken in many pieces, but it's a uh, very distinguished colors, very specifically placed. And then you have levitating blue, orange, and purple above you having a mental breakdown in the center of this. And you're having a hard time coping, okay? Now, from within you, there is a skeleton man that comes out. And this skeleton man is a big part of the problem as well. So who is this? Um, it's a part of you. It comes back to the blood waterfall. It comes back to, do I want to have an identity or do I not? Do I want to face this? How am I supposed to cope with who I am? Who, I am? who am I exactly? But some part of you knows who you are and you are having a very hard time coping with who you are. And the thing is, is who you are is not this scary. Who you are is not this terrifying. It's not, that's why the Blood River is not full of pain. Because who you are is not suffering, okay? Who you are is magical, okay? There's no suffering. So why are you creating suffering for yourself? Why aren't you worthy of just being who you are? Why can't you just be who you are, you know? The skeleton man, so, okay. <sighs> Sounds like I'm going to have to, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So we're. I'm just going to let this... I'm going to literally have to rip you apart in order for you to just stop ripping yourself apart. So you are doing this and you need to stop doing this because it doesn't make sense. Why? Why are you doing this to yourself? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am taking one part of this energy, which creates the visual images I've described about the blue and the orange and the purple and the different rooms and then the you and now the skeleton inside of you. So I'm taking one side of the room and I'm ripping it with the other side of the room and I'm ripping it and I'm ripping it apart into all these different pieces and I'm taking the pieces like a jerk and an asshole and I'm just throwing them away out into whatever universes I feel like it and I don't really care about you because you don't care about yourself. So if you don't care about yourself, then I can do this to you. 
because you don't care about yourself anyway. So if I throw you away, that doesn't matter either, does it? So I'm just going to do this because you don't matter. And that's what you're saying to yourself. Because you matter, okay? I'm doing this because you matter. <laughs> okay. All right. So see how you react to this. So my spirit guides show me that when you get ripped apart, you become all these different colors of the rainbow and you get scattered throughout many different universes. And I mean, I don't know how you are like... How do you mentally cope with life? Because th this is so extreme that it's incredible that you are able to f have a function as a normal person. This in your energy field is so extreme that I'm surprised that you are able to function as a normal person. So, okay, so you needed to see that. This is almost like paralleling um, an event of your soul's journey. So, I mean, how am I supposed to define time related to this? Let's just, let's just envision a part of your soul history as your soul was ripped into pieces of different colors and strewn about different universes. But when the event happened, you, it's almost like you lost connection with your, yourself or your identity, but you didn't really care anyway. And you just let the event rip you apart, but figured you would find yourself in the end. And you haven't yet because you're still carrying the same relationship with the event that it doesn't really matter anyway. So that relationship has to stop because it does matter and the event matters and what happened in the event matters and why the event happened matters because you matter. And if we don't ever get answers to any of these questions, that's fine because the only answer we need is that you matter. And you have to start saying that about yourself to yourself. I matter. And if you want to identify yourself as a dog on a leash, then that's okay. Because you can be a dog on a leash, but you could also be a dog owner, walking a dog. You could also be a jerk. You could be a not nice dog owner, but you could be a dog in self-pity and saying, uh, why am I always in, on a leash? I just want a room free. You know, you could be that too. But you have to choose to have a relationship with your reality and your experience and not just phase out and not want to have a relationship with any idea of existence itself existence at all or existing we're making progress here i know this may sound really jumbly and crazy but your energy field is actually making progress it's it needs to have these conversations you need to hear this stuff all right now the next thing i i have to do is we are going to have to find you that's what it feels like, and I'm looking for yellow, like I'm looking for all these different colors, and when I go to find you, I mean, I'm literally, it's almost like trying to find the color yellow in an entire universe. Um, and, and I have to go, I, I have to do it the hard way. Like, I don't get to just be connected to literally everything and then bam, oh, there you are. Um, I have to go the long way around. I have to, like, look under every rock, look around every corner to find you. And it's going to take a bajillion years and a bajillion, bajillion, quajillion lifetimes. Like, forever. I'll never find you. Never, you know. But it's really you finding yourself. You'll never find yourself ever. That's a weird thing that you are saying to you inside yourself. But why don't you want to find yourself? Why don't you want to find yourself? Why don't you want to be yourself? What disgusts you about you? You're starting to show me yourself so I don't have to find you. You kind of like curled up in your yellow and you're slowly coming up out of a curled ball and you're starting to... Be like a flower opening up. And the yellow part of you says that I don't I don't want to know purple. I don't want to know blue. I don't want to know orange. I hate those guys. I can't stand those guys. And that's why I have to get really tight and really small. And I got to not be found. Because I don't want anything to do with them. They're jerks. They're the reason why everything. And they're selfish. They say, well, yellow, I think you're selfish. 
Why are you going off and hiding when everybody needs you? And maybe blue and orange and purple would be better if you would just come out of hiding. Because maybe they need you in order to be better. You're not giving them a chance because you're not giving them a part of yourself that they need in order to overcome their own vulnerability. So you're being selfish. I'm bringing blue and purple and orange in here. And red's showing up now too all of a sudden. Red is nasty. Red is like just a gross, nasty, like starving, vicious mouthful of teeth. And it wants to eat. It wants to eat things. And it want, it's like I can feel the ripping of flesh. Like a mouth that uh, bites into flesh and rips it. And then chews on it. And it's all still alive. And Red just loves this. So I'm putting yellow into red. And uh, when yellow goes into red, it doesn't become orange. It's just yellow and red. And uh, red stops. Can't do anything. Yellow has stained it, which means yellow has changed it. And then I'm throwing yellow onto blue and purple <laughs> and orange. And everybody now feels like they're being burned alive. That yellow is like fire. And yellow is, is burning their flesh right now. So I literally just time out this whole thing. And I say, will you guys shut up? Like, will you stop reacting? You're still choosing suffering. At least you're having reactions and you're staying here. But you're just... Choosing suffering. Why don't you just create a social event? We'll have some uh, fruit punch. We'll create some little some some tables in the basement of the community church, and we'll get the whole family together. And then we can hang out. You know, it'll be music and fun like this. It'll be maybe boring, but it'll be really good, and you're glad that you went. You know, one of those experiences. Let's just do it. It's been too long. Okay, you're you're venting something here. Okay, there's a green color coming around. We're just gonna get through all these. Ugh. Green is really like it's like a Loch Ness monster or something. It's like uh, it never can be seen, but it is there. <laughs> green is sneaky. But it is. It's like weaving in and out and around everybody, but it's never seen. Okay, this is getting very, very dizzying, and the throat is getting exhausted, and it feels like it wants to vomit. The mind is also getting so exhausted it wants to vomit as well. The third eye and the crown both are wanting to vomit. <sighs> we're going to have to take a lot of these energies, and we're going to pull them on down, okay? Because... going to keep doing this. Just a moment. Everything is stopping. Just like stopping. White, white is appearing here. Okay, this is going to get weird again. I think it's been kind of weird this whole time, but we're making progress. We really are. White is just like, um, everything is like frozen. It's like Simon didn't say, so we can't move, you know? <laughs> and then white is like Simon says, and everybody does whatever white Simon says. You have got to get to know all your other selves. Why have you you've been not allowing yourself to be all the parts of you? You haven't wanted to. You don't want to. You just keep saying, I don't want to. You are red, you are purple, you are orange and blue and green and white and black and gold and silver. You're all the colors, my friend. You're yellow, you're literally all the colors. All right. 
I don't know what it is with white, but it's like everything becomes unable to... It's like time may still exist. Everything becomes like a white statue. Every little version of yourself just turns into a pure white statue without color. And it doesn't move. You see this whole journey is you rejecting the idea of just simply being yourself. So you feel that you can't be yourself. Therefore, you're creating all of this. How exhausting. How ridiculously exhausting it must be. Because you don't want to be yourself. It's so exhausting. <laughs> and it's okay to be you. Because you're not like the devil here. <laughs> I mean, even if you were, it would be okay to be you too. Because it's okay to be anybody, everybody is okay. And the universe literally needs everybody to be a universe. And if we all were white, then what are we going to learn? You know, we're just all going to be white. And it's so good to have diversity in color and randomness. It's good to have challenge too. But this challenge that you're creating for yourself is just a total rejection and annihilation of existence. While still having to exist. And uh, still just phasing in and out of a concrete um, relationship with what you are, or who you are, what you can be, or any of those things. It's like you don't even want to even... That, that, those, that conversation, I didn't even hear that. I don't even know what that is. And then just blipped into like the fabric of the universe. <laughs> I just say, white, you're boring. You're way too boring. You're really boring everybody. I mean, you don't get to just tell everybody they have to be white now. That's not how this works. We are sharing in the experience. You don't get to just force your white down everybody's throats. We're not just going to become you. And now the universe is a better place. You need to stop with your controlling behavior. Okay, white is pretty demented. And white is very controlling as well. It's like a blank slate. It's an eternal blank slate. And if we continue to create a blank slate, imagine having lifetime where you are lifetimes, like hundreds of lifetimes, where you only get to have a blank slate. So you don't get to exist then. Because to be human is to think that we are doing everything wrong. Even when we are doing things right, we might define that as not doing it good enough. And we could have done it better. So therefore, we are doing that wrong too. So how do you create a blank slate? A fresh new start. If you exist. <laughs> so you exist, but you won't exist in existence. Therefore, you create a blank slate. And forever, an eternal blank slate, which now you don't get to, I mean, how do you get to function like this? You don't. You don't function at all. And this d demented, I mean, it, it looks like a monster. It's blue. It's got a big round blue face and lots of sharp teeth. And it's got like a bit of a beard. And it's got purple rings around the eyes. It's kind of like, kind of cute in a way. It's like kid, cartoonish kids like, um... It's, but it looks like a bit like a lion as well. Um, but it phases in and out of just being pure white and then phases into looking like this creature. Very controlling nature. And it has like a, it, it's like a unikitty because <laughs> it's like a lion kind of. And then it's got like a little horn here. And it uh, emits this white to control everything around it. This is another weird lifetime where um, you actually had powers and you I don't see that you looked like this, but um, you used your powers to control people, okay? Um, and this actually did you a major disservice because once you started to control people, um, the, it's almost like um, what you weren't intending to happen happened. And it was like... Um, People weren't, I, there's a, there's a weird twist to it. There's a totally like twilight zone twist to what's, what happens. Okay. Um, you ever have like an idea that, 
You know, if all your, like, um, let's say, okay, so we see the world, we see how humanity is destroying the planet, right? That, like, everybody talks about this. But what, let's say one human being has the ability to control the choices of the whole world. And now all the human beings are now fueling these brilliant ideas to save the planet and, every, and all this harm, harmony now takes place. You think that looks great, right? That was the biggest nightmare you could have ever done. So somehow you made a choice to control people to make it better, but it made things so ridiculously bad. Even if it appears to be good, it was bad for you, extremely bad for you. Um, and they're showing me, it's really hard for me to understand, but it's almost like when you started to control everybody, they became you. So you were surrounded by yourself everywhere in um, separate versions, and it was absolutely mind-destroying. Um, and it wasn't what you had intended on happening. You thought that you were getting something um, like a one-up here, but it, what you ended up doing was splitting apart your mind and everybody became different parts of yourself and you were in a world of yourself. I don't, it, it's weird. It's a very weird Twilight Zone episode. You thought it would be a good idea, ended up being the worst thing you could have ever done. They show me this. And you can't forgive yourself for that. This is the best Abby the human being to, can tell you about that lifetime. It's a really weird lifetime. But it's something like this. And you have not forgiven yourself for this. And it also jacked you up like your soul freaked out about it. And you've not been able to cope with that one. Like you haven't resolved that one. And who knows how long. That's been like hanging out there with you for a while. That's part of what we're trying to accomplish here is when that event, that weird lifetime happened, you, ha you have to pull yourself back into yourself from all the people that you affected and infected with your control inspirations. You, you, you did something very big time, insanely, like, wow. <laughs> and, uh... I'm trying to figure out how to I'm trying to figure out how to reconcile this one for you. Because uh when I I'm working on just telling you it it's just simply life. <laughs> we all you could say that your mistake was um stealing a candy bar and getting caught, you know. Um where's the, what's the weight on that? Like it's, it's not that big of a deal, right, in comparison to controlling these people that now became yourself and now you're living in a world of yourself and you basically lost your mind. There's something like this happened, but you weren't able to cope with it and you thought it would make things better, but you didn't expect what happened because it became a weird Twilight Zone episode. So that sounds pretty bad in comparison to stealing a Snicker bar and getting caught, all right? Or maybe stealing a Snicker bar and not getting caught but feeling guilty about it because you should have paid for it. <laughs> They're both on the same level, believe it or not. It depends on how you want to love yourself for your choice. How you want to say, you know what? I made a choice. I had an experience on that choice. And I feel kind of gross inside. Or I feel really, really gross inside. Or I'm just going to pretend that I don't feel gross inside. But you still have to learn how to reconcile the choices. And that's what life is. That's all life is is being faced with an opportunity, making a decision, and then how does that decision make you feel? Now, how are you able to cope with it? Can you forgive yourself? What is the process of self-love after making a decision like this? Like, what is the process, you know? In the end, we've all done literally everything you could possibly imagine. <sighs> This is helping you a lot. You're feeling a lot better. You still, you're starting to show me many bodies that are all covered in white and they're kind of like a big grave uh, in the ground and there's lots of bodies all mangled into each other. Like that, it's almost like a, like a, like a million white worms in a, in a hole and you're looking at them all and they're all white people. They're like pure white skin and they kind of like ashy white skin. And uh, it seems like th this is some, some other lifetime or it's the same lifetime. 
but uh, but this is you standing before a, a grave of many people that died and you were the cause of this one and it wasn't like any war it's a it's some sort of weird other dimension like uh, you had magic ability or something of this kind like you had powers and again you did something that screwed it all up and then everybody died and now like you're the only person left it's something weird like this okay so how are you supposed to cope with this? You keep, when you choose to be yourself, people die. Or when you choose to be yourself, you make bad shit decisions and then the bad Twilight Zone episode happens. So you can't be yourself because you just want a blank slate. <laughs> you can't even have that. So no wonder this is affecting your sexual body because that has a lot to do with how you, you know, the pleasures of life, right? Um, it's not just about intimacy. It's about how you really enjoy life and being who you are and embracing who you are, loving yourself and being happy to just be. And you aren't that. And that's why your sexual body is really defiled from this. Like it's, um, this, you can totally, this is totally revival, revivable. But um, it's hugely um, hurt from this, what we're talking about here. Oh, I will say huge improvements going on around the front of the face, the back of the head, the heart and the throat. <sighs> breathing happening. I mean, even the emotional gut and the sexual body are, are actually breathing and circulating. Exhaustion. You are many colors here. There's a black version of you coming forward and he's a half horse, half man. And he has a strange relationship with white and white doesn't know how, know what white is. Like there's no definable body. Sometimes it shows me it looks like a, a some sort of large bird, like an ostrich or something. Like I just see feathers. I see a bird. I see literally nothing. I see a man. Um... This man has a mustache, um, he's African, um, but he's white. He's a white African man. Like he, you can tell, um, but they show me that he has, he, they show me that he is black, but then they show me that he is white and black. <laughs> and then they show me just this black um, man horse combo. And all these colors are kind of like strewn about like uh, old socks thrown around a room. And just don't really know where they exist in all of this. And it seems to be an issue between black and white. And the colors don't matter. But this all comes back to the event, okay? This event where you got torn into pieces, but you just didn't really care. It didn't really matter. You would find yourself in the end, but you never reconciled that feeling that you would find yourself in the end. Because when is the end? Like, when is that going to happen? So you already have found yourself is what you need to be. Um, I, I am free. I have found myself. I am, I am all of my parts and all my pieces. I am one. I am connection with everything that I am. That is now how we reconcile that. Your energy field is really peaceful. Like, I mean, there's a lot. It's, it's sort of like, kind of like in a, like a, it's quiet, it's silent, but it's kind of like a, like an O. <laughs> o. <laughs> it's kind of what, what it is right now. <laughs> and it feels nice. Blood waterfall doesn't matter because there's no pain. There's nothing really here. I feel like whatever that pathway is that we started with is reconciled considerably just by getting us through all of this gymnastics and getting to this point. Still like an odd silence, like um, we're waiting for black and white to find completion with each other. 
Tell the colors, why don't you just work together? Very exhausted. They say they don't matter. Nothing that they are or ever will be will ever matter because white can chooses to control everybody. That again is coming from the voice of that lifetime where you couldn't really cope with what ended up happening from that choice. You just control everybody. That's all you do. It's all you do. You just decide to control everybody and then look what happens. You know, this is what you do. This is why you can't be yourself because when you're yourself, you just do stuff like this and then everybody suffers and then you suffer. So you need to stop being you if you want to live a happy life. It's really bad. Because none of that's true. It's just an idea. Okay? Just an idea. You hate yourself, man. You do. <sighs> And it's not, it, this would be very strange for you to understand what this is as yourself with your conscious mind because um, you, you have a lot of self-hatred inside your soul, okay? <laughs> so, but it, it's, it, it's because we're having these conversations, because we're bringing it out to the surface, because you're finally looking at it, that's all that has to happen to start a new pathway. And I don't want to call it a clean slate because let's just let it be dirty. Let's just let it be a mess, but just love it just like that. Just let it love it for being a mess, you know? The, the clean slate is just yet another idea, and that idea can be imprisoning too. Um, so if we want it to be a clean slate, then why not want it to just be a messy slate? And then love it for what it is. That's what brings balance to that. It's just an opposing side that we can come to peace now with both sides. White is changing and it's starting to turn a bit brown. And it's a f I got a feminine energy to it now. And it wants to be held by the black um, horseman. It wants to be merged even with this black horseman. It wants everybody to be merged. And there's a bit of a... Um, a sexual starvation because there's been so, I mean, it's like you're a piece of meat that was cut into a bunch of pieces and strewn about and you're missing so much of yourself and then the love of yourself. So if you're missing yourself and the love of yourself, there would be ter total sexual starvation because it's, you need this is like the glue that binds you together in a holy and sacred, divine, healthy, happy, soul balanced way, you know? And all of these uh, colors are coming together and they're all coming into this black horse, man. And then brown too is attracted to becoming a part of all the colors and they all want to be free within the black horse, man. And the black horse, man turns between black and white and, and then he's all the colors within himself. He's contained. But he doesn't want to just be this. He says he wants to be all the stars and the planets and everything. He wants to be a part of everything, but he doesn't want to feel ripped apart. He just wants to feel connected. He said it's just been too hard. And I don't, I don't, I, it's just been too hard for me. And I just want to feel like I'm connected with all of creation. Not ripped apart and thrown away from creation. Okay, this is um, this is happening, and as this uh, feeling of connected with everything is taking place, I start to experience the sexual body is getting much brighter, um, and it's starting to breathe. And there's starvation going on here, okay? But it's um, it's hungering for energy and love, and so that energy and love is um, entering. It's like absorbing it. The heart is starting to glow and the mind is starting to like circulate and glow. Throat is coming to life, emotional gut, crown, root. I mean, that's everybody's starting to come to life here. You're both male and female. Um, you are actually um, having an intimate moment with both your male and female sides. And there's a merging and a connection, and it feels very um, intimate. It feels very um, like pure love. It feels like um, healing, like a really um, long overdue healing. 
It feels like you're being nourished with real food. And it's energy food and it's it's your soul. You're being nourished with your soul. But you're being nourished with with your own self-love and acceptance of self, forgiveness of self. You're actually um, returning to a location. I don't... It seems like you've been separated from this place for, for a long time, but you're actually, I, I see that this intimacy is happening and you're coming to peace with who you are. And I see you rising up and above a very long time. That's the only way I could describe this is what you're rising above was a very, very long time to get to this point, um, but rising above it and now returning to a, a home place, a, an energetic, um, like dimensional home place. And it's not a physical, it's like not some like planet or something. It's like a source location, okay? It feels like you're returning to source or um, returning to some some place that's very meaningful and touching to your soul. That you haven't, you've been separated from from a really long time. You're going to be in recovery, okay? Because I can feel like, I mean, I feel that your soul is collected You've, you're collected and you're much more, there's composure here to the feeling of being collected, but there's mending, like time to solidify the collectedness kind of thing. But I don't want to call it solidify because that sounds like density because this is a very light body experience and it's just a fusing of love. It's just a, a light thing. It's a harmonizing thing. It's a oneness thing. It's a source energy thing. It's a pure love thing. And uh, you are letting a lot of what we've come across just go. You feel very light. You feel at peace with your many selves. And you need time. And when I say you need time, like... I do see souls um, part, so you're always going to, so even a human being, you know, we have, we're many parts of ourselves, like we'll always be many parts of ourselves, so I'll see a part of your soul um, be in a state of meditation for, could be in our human world, like let's just say six months, or let's just say, you know, a year or something. I feel like you have a part of your soul that's going to be in a state of mending and meditation for like six months in our human world is what it kind of feels like. Could be three months, could be three days, but it just, it feels like it needs a very long time to reconcile and cope with what it has been through for a very long time. It's been holding on to a lot. You'll still be a normal human, have normal days, and you'll be feeling more and more like yourself. And you'll be feeling better every day. Because as this soul continues to mend, this part of yourself mends, you're mending. You're, you're mending. So you're going to be mending a lot <laughs> over the next period of time. This session is going to help you out so much. Huge improvement from where we started. I cannot wait. You've got one more session and I cannot wait to see how your energy field uh, feels, what it looks like at that point, because it's only going to get better, okay? Your, your energy field, the way you feel in life, the way you feel about yourself, everything in your harmonious balance is only going to get more heavenly for you, okay? It's really great. It's really great. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. This has been just a one of a kind experience, and uh, you're gonna be you're gonna notice yourself feeling a lot better. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for the experience for sharing, um, so other people can learn. We all have unique energy fields, and you just never know what you're gonna walk into. It's just really neat. Um, so for any of you watching, if you're interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you again. I hope you all have a great day.